No gloom shall be seen on my face, but determination to go on in your footsteps. And with my youthful energy and wisdom learned from you, no gloom shall be seen on my face, but determination to go on forward to the victory, our inevitable victory. From tragedies to infiltration, from infiltration to ambush, from ambush to slavery, from slavery to prison, from prison to resistance, from resistance to resilience, from resilience to prison, from prison back to South Africa, from South Africa to the journey to freedom. It's not a joke. I mean, I'm living in South Africa under weird conditions with people who are living. You wonder how they wake up the next morning. And I'm seriously believing we are not the dying type. And that's very exciting. We've come out of a, an alternative um, anti-apartheid culture. And that's, that's what it was. It was anti-apartheid. It was a, a protest-based culture. Um, and in, in, in protesting and being, in being anti, not enough was actually done to think about what we stand for. There is no difference between the humanizing um, purpose of culture and its purpose as a weapon in the struggle. Because if you release people's human forces, you arm them for the struggle. You give them their self-respect, their dignity, and their force. People use their trumpets to bring down the, the walls of Jericho. Today, we are using our guitars and tambourines and trumpets to bring about the South African regime down. My name is Trina Mthlope. I was born in Hammersdale, near Durban. I lived with my grandmother most of my early childhood, and we had a very intimate, very wonderful relationship. If I was upset about something, she would tell me stories, and before I went to bed, we'd be together. It was just the two of us at the house, so we had all, our, all the time in the world. For as long as I've lived, I've lived with stories. I do all kinds of things, doing poetry, storytelling, and short story writing, even performing as an actress and directing. I like all those things I do, but me, I'm the writer. I'm Zwake Mbuli, the poet. I was born in Sofia Town 30 years ago. When I was a baby, my family moved to Soweto. We had hard times when we were young. My mother was a domestic worker. My father was a driver. He was also a traditional singer. When I was 11, he took me to the men's hostels to watch him sing with the men. Migrant workers come from the rural areas to the cities to find work. And this is where they live. 
It's a setup where there is no privacy at all. Conditions are horrible. The women are not allowed to come, but they come. So then on Sundays, the men come together and dance. It's like a traditional celebration. Once I'm from this place, I'm full of energy and inspiration. I was 10 years old when I went to live with my mother in the trans sky. There was no time to be wearing beautiful dresses with ribbons in my hair the way I had it with my grandmother. <laughs> in the trans sky, I had to work and be prepared to be a wife, to put cow dung on the floor, go get water from the river, and learn to carry it and balance the bucket of water on my head. And there was a man already chosen for me to get married to mainly because he had a lot of cattle to pay the bride price, the lobolo for me. And I remember I used to have nightmares about being raped by this future husband who was many, many years older than I was. Luckily, I had an elder sister, Iris, who decided to send me to boarding school. She paid for me, so that's how I was saved. Many people believe that the people's struggle, people meaning everybody, comes first, and then the women's issues come later. And I personally believe they should go hand in hand. We're living now. I haven't got time to be waiting. I'm going to be dead by the time they make the changes. If the moon were to shine tonight, to light up my face and show off my proud form with beads around my neck and shells in my hair and a soft, easy flowing dress with the colors of Africa. If I were to stand on top of a hill and raise my voice in praise of the women of my country who have worked throughout their lives, not for themselves, but for the very life of all Africans, who would I sing my praises to? I could quote all the names, yes, but where do I begin? Maybe I would choose a name, just one special name that spells out light, that of Mama Nogukanya Lutul. Maybe if I were to call out her name from the top of the hill while the moon is shining bright, Nogukanya! Nogukanya! Maybe my voice would be carried by the wind to reach all the other women whose names are not often mentioned. The ones who sell oranges and potatoes so their children can eat and learn. The ones who scrub floors, polish executive desktops in towering office blocks while the city sleeps. The ones who work in overcrowded hospitals, saving lives, cleaning bullet wounds and delivering new babies. And what of the women, those who are stranded in homelands with a baby in the belly and a baby on the back while their men are sweating in the bowels of the earth? May the lives of all these women be celebrated and made to shine when I cry out Mama Nogukanya's name. Nogukanya! We who are young, we salute our mothers who have given us the heritage of their queendom.
you were recited between each speaker. Amanza! Amanza! Forward to people's culture, forward! Forward to people's culture, forward! Comrades, I have this poem which I thought would be okay for this occasion. How hard and tormenting it is to write about pain and not joy. How hard and tormenting it is to write about slavery and not freedom. When shall I write about the daffodils? How can I write about the beauty of nature when the ground is daily soaked with the blood of the innocent? Nevertheless, the dove of peace also belongs to us in the South. No regime can press over a hot elite of a bowling party forever. The notorious 1913 Land Act remains not negotiable. The land is the key to social order. The tradition of no surrender is the name of the game to total emancipation. The the tradition of no give up is the name of the game to total emancipation. My conviction is deeply rooted, so I am an activist. I am in tune, I attend meetings. That is my best school of education and understanding. So I belong to a movement that has educated me, that has cut me to size. That by being exposed to its meetings, workshops, congresses, seminars, uh, I am what I am today because of that. When I moved to the city, I lived for seven years in the Alexandra Women's Hostel. And I've had enough of living in one room with three other people who are not my relatives, who are not my friends. You know, to share a room with one light bulb. Then things became really hard in 1986 with a state of emergency. The police shot four different people that I know, people that I cared for. When they shot into my bedroom, I had to get out fast. So I moved to Johannesburg. We're not really supposed to live here, so they charge us too much. And sometimes you get the hostilities from the white people who hate you because you look too affluent. And then you get the hostilities from the men who think we're prostitutes. It's not enough, the pain of being removed from your community. In Joburg, I work at the Market Theatre. It's where I started. This year, I am resident director. <laughs> 